Welcome to the 38th annual running of the IAAF Antrim International Cross Country event right here in Northern Ireland. We may not have last year's winners in Jaffa Korea from the Mangan section or Mimi Belite, but what we do have is a treat. We've got the 2013 winner from Uganda, Thomas Iyaku, pipped at the post last year by Korea by just two seconds. Korea is leading Iyaku. Can Iyaku fight back? Bet back in third place. And Jaffa Korea, the world cross country champion, is the Antrim champion now. Now two. And We've also got Stephanie Twell, the 2009 winner from Great Britain. Plenty of international talent, plenty of home talent to look forward to as well. This year, it's been moved, as you can see by this nice weather behind me, to the middle of March from the end of January. In two weeks' time, it's the World Cross Country Championships, but this is a tasty little warm-up. So let's get to the action. Dick Hooper and first, Will Downey. So 35 entering the junior women's race. It includes quite a few who competed in the European Cross Country Championships in Samokov and Bulgaria in December. The English national champion Rebecca Murray is in this. So the international junior women's race at Greenmount underway to get the international races up and running at the 2015 Antrim International Cross Country. Ireland peculiarly are wearing black for this event as you'll see over in the far side, athletes such as Rona Pierce, Deirdre Healy, Orla Minahan, and also Hope Saunders, the majority of whom competed in the European Cross Country Championships in the junior race in Samakov just before Christmas. Strong English team here as well. Amelia Pettit, Elizabeth Mooney, Jennifer Nesbitt, and Rebecca Murray. Watch out for Wales, Heidi Davis, Ellie Atkinson. For Scotland, Mari McLennan, Rachel Dunn, Eve McKinnon, Stephanie Pennycook and a very good looking Irish side they're all clustered together in the black having competed way up in the mountains in Bulgaria a few weeks before Christmas so wearing 76 leading the way from Bedfordshire the England national champion is Rebecca Murray 78 just behind her Jennifer Nesbitt of Worcestershire and alongside our leader wearing 93 representing the north of England is Tessa McCormick as the field makes its way through yeah, England have an absolutely tremendous record of producing junior teams and junior athletes of very high quality. They have an unbelievable record in the European Cross Country Championship. They regularly provide maybe six of the first ten in that race. They seem to win the race every other year. And you wonder sometimes about whatever happens to these, but the Steph Twells and the Gorekas and all these, they come through to a certain level. And it's a great old um, nursery to have and, and, and conveyor belt of talent. And, and fair play to them. There's an Irish junior team in there led by Hope Saunders, the national champion. Hope is from Clonliffe Harriers in, in Dublin. And she's a very, very good athlete, has had a very good season. She's got the experience behind her of running the European juniors in, in Bulgaria last December. She built on that by winning the national cross country. And she's a very fine athlete. And it, it's, it, this is a good race for her to be in with. Not quite the, the quality of a European championship and yet good depth in it. It's good, too, that the Irish team is there. I take a particular interest in one little girl there, Eva Richardson. She has very good pedigree. Her, her father is Noel Richardson, who back in the day ran 28, 32 minutes for 10,000 metres. And her mother is Neve Richardson, a very fine road, track and cross-country athlete as well. So if it's pedigree you're looking for, keep an eye on Eva Richardson. Well, fine pedigree being shown by Rebecca Murray. She's leading way out in the own at the moment. And England one and two. It's Jennifer Nesbitt just behind. And then the chasing bunch of around, well, about 15 stretched out athletes. There's uh, an Irish athlete right up there at the front. It's Hope Saunders, 35th in the European Cross Country Championships in the junior in Samakov in Bulgaria. But Rebecca Murray at the moment, way out on her own. But Murray is showing her own international class at the moment. England could well dominate this. There is a, a home countries international as part of this also. Normally there's an IAAF race included in this and a Northern Ireland Junior Championship as well. But they've all been held elsewhere this time. It's Rebecca Murray who leads. It's Jennifer Nesbitt next. And then a whole clutter of athletes. Heidi Davis of Wales. Mary McLennan of Scotland. Hannah Brown of North of England. Rachel Dunn is there for Scotland as well. There's quite a few athletes from Scotland who are going great guns at the moment. 
but not as good as Rebecca Murray, who right now really is in a class of her own. Oh, she has the field spread eagled, and the fact that she didn't run last year in the Europeans means nothing from an English context. She could have been seventh or eighth in their trials and just missed the team. The important thing is that a lot of the, the girls who ran that race last December are over age now, so everybody who's in this race is eligible for the same championship next December. So you're probably looking at one of the favourites for that race now, Rebecca Murray, as she pulls and toys and plays with this field because she looks the class act here. She's already well clear of the field and her teammate Jennifer Nesbitt has a, in turn has another big gap on the chasing pack and it's a very good English squad in there and don't forget there's a, they are competing in the team race and it's three to score and if you've got one and two in the race there's a fair chance you're going to win that team race well Rebecca Murray was in the team in Samakoff for Great Britain. She finished in 29th place there in the juniors and she's leading Jennifer Nesbitt very well at the moment. And Elizabeth Mooney of Cambridge has now moved up into third place for England. Heidi Davis of Wales just behind and wearing 30, Rachel Dunn of Scotland. So it's a real battle for third, fourth, fifth and sixth at the moment. And Hope Saunders is also up there for Ireland. Now coming through wearing 125 is Megan McBride of the Midlands and then the whole cluster of Irish athletes making their way through. Deirdre Healy, Avril Deegan, Rona Pierce. Rona Pierce was uh, 43rd in the European Championships. This is Bronwyn Jenkinson of Wales making her way through also. But the gloves are off now for Rebecca Murray. She's really in the mood to win. Yeah, she has it won, I think. Um Will and it's just a case of by how much because there is no faltering in her stride, there is no let up in the pressure and Jennifer Nesbitt who is running in second place, she too is running very well. The real battle is for third place and isn't it good to see Hope Saunders up there mixing it with this kind of company because this is where she wants to be if she wants to develop as an athlete, mixing it in here with athletes of a higher quality. And she is by far, she's showing great leadership to the rest of the Irish team. Rona Pierce, an interesting character, grew up in Scaries, ran for years with a crack Scary squad there who won multiple Dublin and, and Irish team titles as they grew up. And then uh, Rona moved to Cork. I think her parents had moved to Cork and obviously she went with them. And so she now is running for, uh, doing her running in the, cor in the Cork scene. Ran very well in the All-Ireland schools there last week. So here she is back up in Belfast building on that. Rebecca Murray of Bedfordshire. Coasting at the moment ahead of Jennifer Nesbitt. It's a gap of around 15 seconds. Rebecca Murray, who is the English national champion, who finished fifth at Hanau in the Lotto Cross Cup at the end of January. Seventh in the British University Championships a week later. That was in Brighton. That was very, very impressive indeed. Tenth in the British Inter-County Championships. That was also the World Cross Country Trials British Athletics Cross Challenge in Birmingham last week. Well, she looks really on form at the moment. Well on her way to victory. Jennifer Nesbitt of Worcestershire is in second place. She was second in the Worcester Park run in the middle of January. She was 12th in those British Inter-County Championships last week. She won in Milton Keynes in February in the Chiltern League. She was second in the Midland Championships in Nottingham. She's had a plethora of really strong results. She was seventh in the English National Championship and they're one and two and the rest are well behind at the moment here. But it's Rebecca Murray looking very good, way, way out on her own and on her way to victory and Jennifer Nesbitt doing her best to keep up. Yeah, and another girl we haven't mentioned actually is the red vest of Wales, Heidi Davis, who's been running very well. She's running in fourth place there and she is, is splitting the English and the Scottish girls nicely there and is giving a very fine account of herself because these are two quality girls up front. Be very surprised if they don't form a big part of what will most likely be a winning a UK team for the for the Eurocross in France next December. So keep a, an eye out for Rebecca Murray and Jennifer Nesbitt. It's not the last we'll see of them. They thought when Paula Radcliffe was around, there didn't seem to be very many other English girls of a high quality. And now they're to a penny in England. The women's distance running is so strong at the moment. It's like a conveyor belt of talent. And Rebecca Murray is the latest of... Uh, of these to come good and she's showing us here in Greenmount what it's all about running freely running strongly running with confidence and an expectation I'm the best I'm going to win
And she is going to win now because this is the closing straight for Rebecca Murray. What a very, very impressive performance this is. Rebecca Murray is going to win and win in some style. She is the under 20 champion. She's taken the home country's international championship. And that is an absolutely brilliant achievement for her. And here comes Jennifer Nesbitt in second place for England. And England might just take the entire podium here. Murray wins it, Nesbitt in second place. And it's Elizabeth Mooney of Cambridge who's breaking clear and who's going to take third place, who's going to take the bronze medal. England 1-2-3, Murray, Nesbitt, and now Mooney with Heidi Davis of Wales in fourth place. Murray McLennan of Scotland is going to take fifth. And Hannah Brown of North England will be sixth. Head of Scotland's Rachel Dunn. Scotland will be on the team podium for certain, probably in second place. But England have taken the team prize with the minimum points possible. One, two, and three. Six points for them. Gold all the way. And team gold too. That's a good team performance. You can't better that, Will. Six points C couldn't be any lower. Great to performance too by Hope Saunders. Probably the Irish performance of the day in eighth place. Really competitive run. Rebecca, a, a cracking pace there. Was that the plan to go out at that speed? Uh, yeah, there's some good girls in the race. I thought my best chance was really to just get out as hard as I could and see how I went, really. It's been a good year for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I can't believe it. It's been, it's been a great year. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for any more, really. And what are the uh, what are the plans for the coming year ahead? Um, well, I guess the first track race will be Bucks, and then just see where I go from there, really. Just hope that I can carry some form onto the track. How important was it testing yourself against athletes from other countries? Yeah, really important. It helps you like work out where you are and how you're getting on with your training, and that it's a good marker. Men to watch in the junior men's race, Ewan Gillam, who won the British Cross Challenge here last year, Jonathan Davis, the English national champion, and Joe Stewart, the English inter-county champion. So underway in the junior men's race and a big Scottish contingent away to the right of our picture. And that includes the champion last year at both under 17 and under 20 level in the British Cross Challenge at Greenmount. And that's Ewan Gillam. The overall race was won by Aaron Hanlon. He's not competing today for Ireland. As pretty much for Ireland, the cross country season is just about over. Also featuring in this a very strong English contingent, Jonathan Davis, the English national champion, who last week won on the roads in the Trafford 10k and while he was doing that Joe Stewart was claiming the English Inter-County Championship. Stewart finished second in the Lotto Cross Cup in Heno in Belgium a very impressive performance from him in terms of the Scottish contingent along with Ewan Gillam we've got Dale Colley, Aidan Thompson and Ross Tennant there are seven teams in this England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland plus also North of England, South of England and Midlands also. The South of England vest is red and blue, and you can see Kieran Woods, well placed at the moment, coming through the gold vest of North of England, and then the white with the green hoop. Well, that could be Rohini Shamrock, but in this case, it is the English Midlands. So it's Jonathan Davis who's leading here for England as they go through the forest for the first time. And looking very good, Jacob Allen alongside and wearing 79 and 112 is Kieran Woods of the South of England, 97 Cameron Field in the gold singlet of the North of England, the very well represented at the moment. Jonathan Davis is the England national champion, he's from Reading AC and Birmingham University, a string of wins so far this year and he's already moving out well ahead of the front as they pass the main building of the Greenmount campus here. Yeah, Jonathan loves to front run, he's a lot of his victories have come in this manner he just has the confidence to ease himself away from the field has no fear of running on his own doesn't tend to look back just puts the head down and gets on with it and he's showing a bit of class here good field there joe stewart is in second place he's from he's from england as well and then there's a few south of england boys in there jonathan davis who is absolutely flying at the moment representing england he won the traffic 10k earlier this year so he's good on the roads also he was second in the british university championships in brighton and he's the birmingham league cross-country champion as well and he looks so assured at the moment as he's opened up a very strong lead coming forward wearing 81 is Joe Stewart of England. He was second in the Lotto Cross Cup in Hanau in Belgium. 
in January. He's the inter-county cross-country champion in England. He represents East Cheshire and Leeds University. Interesting, you should mention that Jonathan won the Trafford 10K, which is a high-quality uh, 10K race over in, in the UK. He does have the look of a road runner, one has to say. The way he is, his knee lift is relatively low, and he just has that smooth look of a guy who's going along on the tarmac. And I wouldn't be surprised if down the road he develops into a marathon runner of substance. He just has that, that cadence and that ambience about him. Good, good battle there for second place. The, the red and blue represents the south of England. The yellow represents the north of England. And obviously the white is the, is the English vest. the Northern Ireland team in white. It's Ryan Sharkey, Colonel McCambridge, James Smith and Michael Malarkey. Jonathan Davis well ahead of the rest. This is a brilliant virtuoso performance at the moment. Where's the rest? Here they come and they'll be passing around 10, 15 seconds down. This could be a very big winning margin if he keeps this up. It's Joe Stewart in second place. Kieran Woods of the South of England is up there, who was 23rd in the European Cross Country Championship in the junior race in Samakov in Bulgaria before Christmas. Jonathan Davis looks a really impressive talent here. Normally we've much bigger crowds for this, I should explain. The Home Countries International is part of this event this year, which means it's moved to March, normally when it's been on in January, either the week before or the week after the Edinburgh cross country. There have been massive crowds here in the past, an event where we've seen the likes of Paula Radcliffe and Steve Ovet win, and in the most more recent years, Vanula Britain doing well in the women, and in terms of the men, the great Mike Keegan and Thomas Ieko have taken recent triumphs as well. Yeah, the battle for second place is still in tow there, and Joe, Joe Stewart seems anxious to win it. He's, he keeps pushing the pace, but he's got plenty of company there, and so it's going to be tough, but there's no doubting who's going to win this race. He's, in fact, he's the most emphatic winner of the day, really. Uh, Jonathan Davis, he took this race from the scruff of the neck right from the start, and he's coasted up and down those hills and around those bends like a man with total control, and he looks like a guy out for a Sunday morning stroll. Joe Stewart as well is keeping up the pace quite well ahead of Kieran Woods and there's a prospect that they might be able to break away from Aidan Thompson there. That's second, third and fourth at the moment. Jonathan Davis is going very well though. Miles clear in the lead at the moment and surely uncatchable as he's on the way to glory in Green Mount today. It's an unusual March championship for this Antrim IAAF International Cross Country. But international classes, Jonathan Davis, and so too Joe Stewart and Kieran Woods, who've broken away from the rest, and they're looking for a spot on the podium too. Fourth place at the moment for Scotland is Aidan Thompson, and in fifth place is Jack Rowe in the red and blue of South England. But Jonathan Davis, absolutely uncatchable today, and he's on his way to an impressive victory. Yeah, he's got a huge gap. It's about... 18, 20 seconds, he's not going to be caught. The real battle is for second place now between Joe Stewart and Kieran Woods. Joe has led most of the way. Joe seems to be one of these guys who likes to have his nose in front. Let's see, has Kieran Woods got a, a kick? Because if he hasn't, he's just going to regret sitting there and not giving Joe more trouble. But this is going to be a good battle for second place. A name familiar in current sport for Wales, an even greater name of the past. But Jonathan Davis may be a name that we get accustomed to in terms of athletics from now on. Joe Stewart, Kieran Woods looking very comfortable in second and third. And up with them for Scotland, Aidan Thompson in fourth place. Cameron Field in the north of England behind them in fifth. But really, the main battle right now is for second, isn't it? Jonathan Davis so far out in front, so far clear of the rest. All on his own in splendid isolation, Jonathan Davis. And now the rest begin to emerge behind him, Stewart and Woods. Are the podium positions decided already? There's a major suspicion that that very much is the case. And coming up in the rise behind them, Jack Rowe of the south of England and Aidan Thompson of Scotland, who had been fourth for quite a while, but Thompson now has lost fourth place. And the problem for the rest of the field is they can see Jonathan Davis, but only the back of a singlet, and it's a long way away. Doing great. Keep going. Davis, well 
looking so comfortable. It's a little trot out in the park for him. Ease of movement, the rest doing their best to catch up, but the gap is 20 seconds. Good job, Joe Stewart of England, 81. Kieran Woods, 1-1-2 for the south of England. Aidan Thompson for Scotland, moving back up into fourth place. So here comes Jonathan Davis for the last time as he passes in front of the Green Mount campus building. Joe Stewart of England is in second place, but Jonathan Davis, the English national champion, is going to be the Antrim International Cross Country Champion in the junior men at under 20 level. He's going to be the home country's champion, and he's going to do it in wonderful style. Jonathan Davis wins for England, a brilliant triumph, and around 20 seconds back will be Joe Stewart for England. Looks as if they'll be in the running certainly for the team title but Stewart takes the silver Kieran Woods of South England is just behind him in third place but Davis a very impressive victor today and there's another South of England Singler coming home in fourth Woods takes third it's Jack Rowe in fourth place for the South of England Aidan Thompson will be fifth for Scotland and Declan McMahon is sixth for the Midlands the team results going to South England ahead of the English national team. Scotland in third place. Jonathan Davis is the junior men's champion. 22 minutes, 15 seconds. Joe Stewart takes the silver. Kieran Woods takes the bronze. And Jonathan Davis wins it clearly. Jonathan, a fantastic win. Uh, out front there just give us a, an idea of when it, when you're a pacemaker out front and you're setting such a speed how difficult it is um it's tough yeah i mean i went here with that in mind i wanted to win it and win it well so yeah i went out there and obviously it's tougher you have to face the wind and you have to pace yourself you're not chasing anyone but um i was comfortable today and i felt good so i went for it pretty decent conditions as well it's been changed to marsh this year and the, the conditions are not as muddy as it's been in the past that helps um yeah i mean last year i did the senior race here um and it was an absolute mud bath so this year um, it's a lot firmer and you're able to move and because it was 7.2k which is a little bit less than what I've been doing this year it really was a quick race and a little bit different to what we've been doing but I enjoyed it a lot yeah. What's your optimal distance then in one of these races? Um, it's tough to say really it, just, it kind of depends but I do quite enjoy these kind of faster races you kind of get in a good rhythm and you can kind of just get to work whereas if obviously it's muddy and hilly you're uh, chopping and you haven't changed your stride and stuff but today yeah it was it was good well, congratulations anyway thanks a lot for the pleasure cheers step 12 won the 2009 edition here at green man but major ethiopian competition today in the form of bertikan fentilamu and bertikan mcdami so the senior women's race underway for antrim 2015 at green Mount. slightly smaller field than we're used to seeing 34 starters but quality featuring two Ethiopians, Bertikan Fantialamu. She's wearing number six. She's been in a world championship. She's regular in the Diamond League circuit and firing away ahead of the rest in the black singlet representing Kenya, part of the Project Africa Athletics Initiative, which we'll tell you about a little bit later. And that for Kenya is Selena Kangogo. But also up there, a former champion from Antrim in 2009, Stephanie Twell. She's in the pink singlet, the three times junior European cross-country champion and also in there Bertukan Adamu the former African junior champion in cross-country back in 2011 she and Bertukan Fentilamu certainly two to watch Adamu wearing seven Fentilamu wearing six and at the moment with them Antwell wearing 146 Selena Kangogo who's been plucked out of a rural East African athletics club Scotland well represented as well, going through shot Fiona Thompson, Charlotte Morgan, Cathy Bristow moving, and Maddie Murray as well, in interesting up. athlete, she's wearing 36 okay, right. and also wearing 8 in the light blue, the jade blue, Sanya Roman from Slovenia. And cross country is all about team running, in this race today there are 8 teams, largely regional teams from, <laughs> U from the UK. There's a Northern Ireland team, Guernsey team, Wales, Welsh team, Scottish team, and it's three to score. So these, as you look at closely at the runners running through, have a look at the colour of their vest, identify with what region, what country, what team they're running for, and you'll get an idea of the depth in this field, the quality. Up front, it's good to see Steph Twell, the 2009 champion, back running well and mixing it with the African girls, Fenty Alamo and Adamu. Keep an eye out too for uh, Sonia Roman from Slovenia. 
She's ran in Prague in the 1500 metres there a couple of weeks ago, so she should be sharp. Whether she can go the early pace will be another thing. Um, but at the moment, it's Steph Twell and the two African girls. Steph Twell, she missed out on the 2012 Olympic Games, sadly with a foot injury, and experienced that. Obviously, she'll never enjoy again a home-based Olympic Games, but maybe she could get another home success in the United Kingdom, an Irish soil in Greenmount having done it here six years ago, but she's really up against it, against these two quality international Ethiopian athletes with the Kenyan Selena Kangogo just behind. Yes, yeah, Steph had such a golden junior career, winning three European junior titles in a row, and there's always a danger when one gets success so young that they tend to fade out of the sport and Steph has endured her problems her injuries like nearly every athlete and she's battled through them and actually she looks she looks stronger she looks physically different I think at the moment and looks very well looks looks good and it's good to see her up there she's never been afraid to to trade blows with the Africans unlike a lot of Europeans who tend to be a little bit psyched out by them but you can see there she's taking the race to Fanti Alamu and Adamu two really high quality athletes um, and, and Steph is going to put it up to them Bahrain won two last year with Mimi Belletti and Mariam Jamal. They're not here this year. Almas Belletti representing Belgium was in third place. Fanula Britain fourth, having won it the two previous years. Well, none of them are here this year. Fanula Britain skipping the well rest of the cross-country season. She competed at the Europeans, but not in the Worlds. There's no Irish team going to China either. And as a result of that, the Irish cross-country season is just about over. But quite a lot of good Northern Ireland representation in this race. Emma Mitchell and Cathy McCourt among them. But England looking good in terms of the home country international. And it's either going to be Ethiopia or Britain that looks to take the title here. Fourth place for Maddie Murray at the moment. And fifth for Kenya, Selena Kangogo. And sixth, Sonia Roman fresh from Prague and the European indoors last week in which she was competing in both the 1500 metres and the 3000, reached the final of the 15 but didn't finish in the 3000 but at the moment it's Bertikan Fentilamu who leads as they pass the Green Mount base, Bertikan Adamu in second place and Stephanie Twell is in third. Yeah back to field the white vest with the green hoop there is the team of British Midlands and, and, and right now the British Midlands and the English team are in a bit of a battle for the team race so for the connoisseurs who like to be out there with their with their calculators, a lot of adding up will 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 it'll be pretty close. I can imagine three to score is very tight anyway, so it's hard to make progress um, it, through the field when it's as tight as that. So you, it's very important that you get somebody up there scoring a low score early on. Uh, the the first three. Venti Alamu, Twell and Adamu uh, in our picture there, they're, they're not counting in the team race, they're running in the international section of it. So really, the first placed runner in the actual uh, team race is Maddie Murray there in fourth place. Why she's checking her watch now, I've no idea. And Venti Alamu leading them out at the moment. Very, very strong indeed. And Adamu just behind her, Steph Twell, and really looks to be between these three for the podium positions. And in fourth place now, Maddie Murray of Edinburgh AC. She's the Scottish champion, won that title last month. Australian born, and this is her first international appearance for Scotland. 1-3-3 is Jane Potter, who's representing the England Midlands. And alongside her, Sonia Roman, who was 10th last week in the 1500 metres final in the European indoors in Prague. 3,000 metres, didn't get to finish that. I guess she'll finish this. And Fentilomu is trying to finish the rest of the field. She keeps kicking back every time she goes up the hill in the back of the course. And Twell is hanging on to the other Ethiopian, Berta Kanamadamu, very, very well indeed. Yeah, Fentilomu just flew up that hill there. So she's really put, put the gun down. And it'll be interesting to see if there can be any response. Adamu looked like she didn't really, she wasn't up for the challenge of going with Fenty Alamu. So maybe she's in that settling for second mode. And if she's in that mode, that's a dangerous place to be because if Steph Twell sniffs any bit of a chance at all, she'll be up on her back. There's Maddie Murray going through, running very well actually, tacking that hill nicely, full of, full of her arms working hard and working her, uh, driving up that hill. So Fenty Alamu going into the field, that's alongside the circuit. They go around the Darren Clark Golf School, the Ryder Cup captain for the next edition in 
2016. Steph Twell now taking second place ahead of Berta Kanadamu. That's a very positive move from the 2009 Greenmount champion. And Maddie Murray at the moment is leading the home country's race. Sonia Roman of Slovenia in fifth place at the moment. Nicholas Sykes is up there, 1-3-1, one, one, just behind Jane Potter there. Teammates for the Midlands team, and they're looking for honours too in the home country's international. But Fentalamu looking very, very good as they're heading towards the finish. It's looking like another major African triumph, and this one for Ethiopia. Fentilamu, the 25-year-old, is well out on her own. We see her regularly on the Diamond League circuit. Well, she's great on the grass as well and in the fields. And it's looking like a big victory for her in the Antrim International Cross Country. Theresa McDade watching on, the Irish team manager. But it's Fentilamu well out ahead as we're on the final lap. Yeah, very fine run from Fenty Alamo. She's really split the, split the race open here. I'm impressed with the way Steph Twell has risen to the challenge. She, she battled with Adamu for a while, and now she seems to have broken Adamu. So it, it's time now for her to set her sights on Fenty Alamo. But Fenty Alamo is running so well, it's going to be difficult for Steph to, to get the momentum back up to her. Uh, Maddie Murray, in actual fact, in fourth place, could, if she, if she keeps, keeps working, she could haul in Adamu because Adamu is really uh, is slowing, to, to put, be frank about things, and there's plenty uh, there for Maddie Murray to chase. But just look at Fenty Alamu at the moment, absolutely flying, and Steph Twell also with very good technique, as you'd expect from her. Berta Kanodamu is back, well back, as you can see, in third place as they come through the forest here at Greenmount but Bertakan Fenty Lamu has got a good lead Twell avoiding the section that's becoming more and more muddy as time goes on but certainly nowhere like as muddy as we've seen at Greenmount down through the years it's two months later than usual in March it means that the field may not be as big as we normally see not as strong the crowd's not either but we've got some big international names and Steph Twell who's won here before well she's looked like she's heading for the podium again it's silver for her at the moment had a Bertakan Adamu is in third place at the moment here, but can Twell get the gold of Bertakan Fenty Alamu? And here's Murray in fourth. Yeah, if Murray believes in herself, she's got a real chance off Adamu there because Adamu, she went up that hill like a lady who didn't really want to know about it. And there's Maddie just driving up the hill. She seems to get a little bit distracted looking around or checking her watch or whatever. If she put her head down and went chased after what's ahead of her, she, she never know what she could do. There's the British Midlands packing well and they're they're in the, with a fight for this uh, for this team race by my reckoning there's only a point or two between both teams at the moment well if Ethiopia were a team in their own right they'd surely take the gold medal here because they've got first and third at the moment and here comes Bertukan Fenty Alamu very very impressive one final bend for her and she'll be on her way in the closing straight and on her way to a gold medal victory in the Antrim IAAF International Cross Country. Steph Twell is around 60, 70 metres behind and it's Bertikan Fentilamu who's on her way to a very impressive victory. Steph Twell still well behind and Fentilamu won't be caught at this stage. It was Bahrain 1-2 last year. It'll be Ethiopia 1-3 this year. Bertikan Fentilamu wins in Antrim and wins quite comprehensively. Steph Twell, the former champion, she won this title when she was a teenager. She comes home in second place, 16 seconds behind Fenty Alamu, and it's going to be Berta Kamadamu who will come home in third place, the former African junior champion in the steeplechase four years ago. It's bronze for Adamu, and she will take third. Yeah, Steph Twell was obviously pleased when she came across the line there to split the two African girls. There's a very fine run from Maddie Murray. I'm impressed with that girl today. She's run well. For Scotland, Maddie Murray takes the home country's international title. Sonia Roman will come home in fifth place for Slovenia. And there's a bit of a Midlands battle between Nicholas Sykes and Jane Potter. Interesting that there's two Midlands girls in before the first English scorer, even though the, uh, as they rounded the last bend, the teams were very tight. They were within a point of each other, so it probably all depends on where the third scorer comes in. So victory for Ethiopia and Bertukan Fenty Alamu. 24 minutes, 12 seconds. Steph 12, second for Britain, 24-28. And Bertukan Adamu of Ethiopia comes third with the home country's international title going to Scotland and Maddie Murray. Yeah, very good run by Steph 12. 
Steph, are you happy with that performance? I'm delighted, yeah. It was a great run. It was a true race with the Ethiopians. And I knew that they'd have some team tactics, which they did, and I just had to get amongst it. I wasn't going to come all the way out here and let them dictate it to me. So I got involved, and I'm really happy, yeah. How are you feeling around the halfway mark? Because that's what sort of where Birds Can pulled away there? Tired, because that's when the race opened up. Um, I think we knew that sometimes they're using me to sit on, sometimes I had to sit on them. And so I knew at the two two laps to go mark the race was going down um, so I was kind of in third place tracking we became single file so it was pretty fast and then I knew that the girl who came third um, she started to I could really hear her breathing so I was like I've got to go for it and just chase 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 so I'm really delighted to come away with the silver. And we know you've had injury problems in the past but do you really feel now that you're, you're back to your best? Yeah, I think that comes part and parcel of being an athlete. I had a pretty bad one where I broke my ankle, but I think I'm over it now. Um, I've learned about it. I, te you know, I care about it a lot more, and I think that shows in like how I treat my training, how I treat the races that I choose to do. And today, Antrim's a really nice, well looked after course. A bit muddy and twisty at, in places, but gets all the all cross country challenge that you need. So yeah, I'm over that, and I'm really delighted to come away on the podium. So there's cross country. We're in the middle of March of 2015. The rest of this year, talk us through it. Um, so I'm in a bit of a transition. I went to Australia to visit my dad and got some track work in. Coming up into mileage before then I come down on mileage before the track again. So I get my last sort of dose really of mileage. And yeah, I'm going to do a Brighton 10K and then I'm going to head to America. I'd like to do the 5K out there and possibly a 1500 5K again. Um, just to start getting some times because I want to make the um, Great Britain team for Beijing. So. Exciting list of primary schools races as well. Here's the list of winners, and perhaps these are names we'll be seeing for many years to come in international competition. So the 2013 champion Thomas Ayeko heading the field for the senior men's race, but he's up against top international Kenyan medalist Edwin Soy and Jonathan Ndiku. So this is the men's senior international race for Antrim 2015 at Greenmount. And we have a former winner here as well in Thomas Ayeko of Uganda, but shooting away is Jonathan Ndiku of Kenya with the blue cap and that fluorescent yellow singlet and Jonathan Ndiku of Kenya is the current Commonwealth Games 3000 meter steeplechase champion. He's been the world junior champion twice over the steeplechase, African junior champion as well in 2009. It's a very strong field. Another Kenyan in Edwin Soy, a couple of Project Africa athletes in Gideon Kimusop and Vincent Chepikon. Interesting to see how they're going to do, but Thomas Ayoko of Uganda. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing if he can make it onto the podium. Ayoko is wearing three. Edwin Soy, former Olympic, 5,000 metres bronze medalist from Beijing in 2008. He wears four. Jonathan Ndiku wearing one. Kimusop and Shepigon going with them at the moment. And then lots of athletes coming through representing England. Alexander Turvey, Alistair Weymouth, Stephen Hardman. Liam Brady is up there for Ireland as well, wearing 19. But as they go through the forest section here, it's Jonathan Ndiku who's currently leading yeah. for Kenya. Great steeplechase talent he is. And just behind him... Edwin Soy, who's wearing number four. Thomas Ieko as well. Ieko is in the orange. And those two Project Africa athletes in the black singlets also. Gideon Kimisop and Vincent Chepyogo. How those Africans love to run from the front. Straight away they take up the battle and they have a, a gap already on the rest of the field. Yeah, the four Africans are clear. And, and actually that's Lee Merrion. Uh, running for Guernsey, an interesting character. He's a marathon runner. He's run in both the Commonwealth Games for Guernsey and he's run in the European Championships for the UK. They got bronze medals actually in, in Barcelona there a few years ago and Lee was on that team. So he's, uh, I think he's run about 2.16 for the marathon. So he's a very fine athlete. So it's Ayoko who's wearing the orange singlet and the two Kenyans are in the yellow. Easy to make out then and it's Kimisop the Project Africa athlete representing Kenya, who's in fourth place at the moment. Good movement this by Lee Merrion of Guernsey. Strong uh, representation from the Channel Islands here. He's in fourth place. He's in fifth place at the moment. And then Vincent Chepigon coming through in sixth. But this leading group of three, Indiku, Soy, and Aoka, are well ahead of the rest at the moment. 
Yeah, they bring serious quality to the field. They have such a pedigree of in, in the past of championship races. And, of course, we have the Commonwealth, the reigning Commonwealth steeplechase well champion nice. in there. And they're really showing it they're, that they're a class act on the, on the field, really, is uh, chasing pieces after them. Lee Marion, I suppose, is having a go as best he can. Good battle in the down the field for the team nice. team races there. Yeah, the English team is there, the, the, the Midlands Doing team. Great, guys. Well and done. there's the first Irish South of Ireland man, Liam Brady. Liam runs for Tullamore. He had a very fine run actually in the under 23 race in the European Championships last December. Liam is a former national junior cross country champion, former Irish under 23 cross country champion. Really, really good uh, cross country runner. Comes from a hurling background in, in County Offaly there and was a very good county hurler him, himself. Um, but luckily for the sport of athletics, he ch he's chose running, which he's really good at. So Aoko, Soy and Indiku well ahead of the rest of the moment and very much in control. Aoko finished 16th in the 10,000 metres final at the London 2012 Olympic Games. Aoko wearing three, who won here in 2013. A former world cross-country champion, team's bronze medalist in 2010 and junior silver outright in 2011. He won the Great Birmingham Run in 2013, Jonathan Indiku, all those steeplechase titles, and he beat Yaris Birich and Ezekiel Kemboy, the world and Olympic champion in the last lap, who was a Kenya 1-2-3 in the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, and Edwin Soy, who's won bronze at the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, and also, that was in the 5,000 metres, also a world indoor 3,000 metre bronze medalist, 2012 in Istanbul, beat Mo Farah, in the Prefontaine Classic in 2013. Very impressive, though, how Gideon Kimisop, who's been plucked out of a rural a Kenyan athletics club, is doing very, very well here. They'll be based for a couple of months in Northern Ireland, trying to climatise. They'll be competing in a few European events, events that they otherwise would not have an opportunity to take part in. Yeah, the Africans have been coming here to Belfast for so long, and they have such a tradition of running great cross-country races north of the border. I, I can only recall with great fondness the day back in the late 90s when the great Paul Turgot won his fifth world cross-country title in Belfast and what a thrill it was for all of us to witness the way he skimmed over the muck that day. It's amazing how these Africans who see so little of the kind of muck that we're used to, how they can deal with the conditions so well and it, it just seems to make no difference to them. They float over it and the rest of us sink into it. It's just it's lovely to watch. So leading the way is Edwin Soy, just ahead of Thomas Ieko and Jonathan Nduku currently in third place, and the rest are practically nowhere at the moment. Kimisop is around 10, 15 seconds behind, but the dominance of Kenya and Ethiopia is such that quite a lot of European nations don't really send teams to the World Cross Country Championships anymore. Ireland not sending one to China for the 2015 event. Fanula Britain not competing in that and so no team being sent pretty much as a result of that. Ireland doing very well, particularly in the women's at European level the past five, six years. Right now, Uganda one, Kenya two, Kenya three, Kenya four. They're dominating in green out in 2015. Yeah, I take it that the Kenyans won't be too pleased to have a Ugandan up there stealing their thunder and he is putting it, putting it up to them, Thomas Ayeko. He's, uh, he's really trying to stretch it out there and he has Edwin Sol on his shoulder, but Edwin has tucked in behind rather than r right up there with him. You get the feeling that Edwin is really just hanging on at this stage and it looks like Indiku is, is dropped. He's back, he's losing ground with every stride. Ayeko is really pushing it on now and the hills will sort this one out, I suspect. Very impressive athlete is the Ugandan Thomas Ieko and shortly after winning here in Green Mount in 2013 when it was back in his traditional January slot as opposed to March this year which is why the fields are a little bit less and the crowds also to be truthful Ieko came second yeah. wonderfully in the Cross de San Sebastian in northern Spain. Ieko well in control at the moment Edwin Soy is with him this is the battle for gold right now in Green Mount in 2015 in Diku fighting hard to keep up. Kimisop is still well maybe about 100 metres behind in fourth place. So Indiku is looking for a spot in the podium. Well Kimisop back in fourth place, but doing very well indeed. And he's being urged on by his team for the Project Africa Athletics. And just look at how Chipigon is doing. I make him being in fifth place at the moment. Up there too is Lee Merrion and wearing 88. 
for England is Dean Lacey from Cambridge. He won at the Kent County Championships this season, was second in the Bath Half Marathon. And Andrew Maud, I think, is beginning to do very well also. But Aeko leading the way, Edwin Soy. It's between these two for the top two, because this man in third, Jonathan Ndiku, right now is around 10, 15 seconds back. And there's a lot of a gap to make up. Kimisov, another 10 seconds behind. Yeah, and Kimisop is running really well. He's, as you say, he's sort of a development athlete here. He's not really one of, considered to be one of the bigger stars. But in actual fact, he's running, I'd say he's running above himself and he's he's eyeing a place on the podium because he's not that far behind Indiku. Indiku doesn't look like he's going to get back up in touch with the first two. So that if Indiku doesn't keep up his concentration, Kimisop could, could well close in on him because he, he can see him all the time, whereas Indiku mightn't be as conscious of Kimisop and, ha and his, the proximity to him. Back Back the field too, Andrew Maud of South England is coming through very strongly uh, and he's mixing it with a couple of the other Africans and, and Lee Merrion is there as well. So it's a good race down the field and also a good team race. Um, at the moment it looks like England and the south of England, the, the three England so to speak, south of England, north of England, there isn't much between the three of them um, and they're all battling for that little bit of local pride. That's Wayne Jones of Wales. We've seen him do brilliantly in the junior titles here in the past. He's wearing 71, wearing 41 is Mike Crawley for Scotland. I make them around 15th place at the moment, well behind our leaders of Thomas Iyoko and Edwin Soy. And it should be remembered as well that what has bolstered up the fields for this Antrim International Cross Country in the past also is that when it's been on in January, it's also counted as the Northern Ireland Cross Country Championship, but they had that back in January. It's a traditional place. This event moved to March to cater for the home countries international. Jonathan Indiku in third place, and look at Kimisop. He's come back at Indiku very well. He's battling for the bronze medal position at the moment, but this is the battle for gold. The loser will take the silver. It's between Aeko and Soy at the moment. And look how well back Indiku is, around 200 metres or so, way back in the forest. These boys are trotting up this famous hill at Greenmount so well. Ayeko and Soy, one and two, and three and four right now, Indiku and Kimisop. This could be an interesting old battle between these two. Oh, we've two good battles going on. We've got the two boys up front, Ayeko and Soul, having the right old battle after us saying that we thought Ayeko might have it won. Soul has battled up and he's put his nose in front again. Fair play to him. And back to feel oh, this is great what the what Kimisop is doing the way he's chasing down Indiku if he could get that scalp I tell you he could go home and tell the mates about that one well he's doing fantastically not a professional athlete of course but he's been given a helping hand based in Northern Ireland for the next few months along with a group of four or five it's Aeko and Saul who really don't need any help at the moment but Jonathan Indiku does because Kimisop has just about caught him up this is going to be a battle and a half for the bronze medal and a battle and a half for the gold as well as Ayeko leads out Edwin Soy. They've both been major international medalists. Ayeko has won a big title here. Edwin Soy, an Olympic medalist and a world indoor medalist as well from Beijing and Istanbul respectively. And in terms of the old world athletics final, he's won seven medals of that as Edwin Soy, the man in yellow wearing four, three gold medals, three silver and one bronze. But that's an event which we don't have anymore because that used to take place after the old Golden League at the end of the season around the start of September. Interesting to watch this battle. They both seem to have favourite parts on the course where they like to put their nose in front and have a go and let the legs run. Um, here we go again now with Sol. This seems to be his little spot to have a go. He's checked around to see his Ayoko responding and he most certainly is. He's, he's looking at that vest and he said to himself, I'm hanging on to that. I'll take my breather and when the hills come around, maybe I'll have a go again because that's my spot. And next time round could be the decisive one. They're very, very close both in recent form, in times and whatever, and maybe now we're going to see a little move from Aeko. He just has that. He looks the pressure of the two, one would have to say, and each time he hits the front, if he did it a bit more decisively, he might get his break, and maybe well we're done. looking at that moment now. On. Watch the way. Oh, he stumbled as he went up that hill. Took a bit of momentum out of him just when he was making his move, but he's responded well, and he's still going. And the way Sol, he didn't really fight too hard when that get, when that break came and this could be the decisive moment of the race. 
It certainly looks that way because Thomas Aieko bolted up that hill right at the back of the course, coming out of the forest so supremely. And he's in a position now where he's set to lap athletes. We only have a field of around 45. And for that to be done in a course of around two kilometres, absolutely sensational. And that sums up the performance of Thomas Aieko today, who's going to win the Antrim International Cross Country for the second time in three years. It's good to be back. Thomas Aieko, a winner again. Ed Edwin Soy is going to take the silver here. Great performance from the Kenyan. He did very well. 13 second winning margin. Jonathan Indiku is leading out Gideon Kimisov in the battle for third place. And he's had a look around and has realized how close Kimisov was. But Indiku should hold on. Kimisov will be fourth. Great result for the Project Africa athlete from Kenya. And it'll be Andrew Maud. He's wearing 120. Dean Lacey wearing 88. Maud from Clapham Chases, ninth in the English National Championships, and it looks like he's going to take the international title here at the Home Countries International. Maud finishes fifth, Lacey sixth, one and two in the Home Countries International. Vincent Chepkikon is in seventh place for Kenya. Lee Merrion is in eighth for Guernsey. Alexander Tubby will be ninth, and Alistair Weymouth tenth. So victory for Thomas Ieko, 31 minutes, 27 seconds, 13 seconds clear of Edwin Soy of Kenya with Indiku third, Kimisop four, and the first European, Andrew Maud, in fifth place for South England. First Irishman, Liam Brady, there in 14th place, actually had a very good run. We didn't see too much of him during the race. He finished very strongly. That was a good competitive race and a good team race at that. Won by England in the end by a couple of points from South of England and the, uh, the north of England were third. Good race. Thomas, how happy were you with that win? Yeah, I'm happy. Did you feel that you had the, the win to yourself the whole way through the race? No, I'm not able to win, but he, he does God's grace only, so that you win this race. And after finishing second last year and having won it in 2013, how happy are you to win it again? Yeah. But today I'm fed up. And what are you looking forward to in the rest of this year? Yeah, even I'm preparing to the championship. Only Beijing. Andrew, home nations champion. How are you feeling about that? Oh, fantastic. This is uh, the biggest achievement by far that I've ever made. So I um, uh, just really enjoyed the race. Went out with England guys and held on. And towards the finish, I felt strong, so I went for it. Was that the plan, just to hang on and then possibly uh, have a kick at the end? Yeah, um, well, this is a step up for me in standard, so I uh, was feeling good, so I just went out and thought I've run the race. The last few races I've come, in, come through late, but i dis been disappointed that I couldn't have placed higher, so I decided to go out with the race today and uh, just see how I felt and felt good, so stuck in there. When you see the likes of Thomas Ieku, who won the race, does that really give you something to aspire to? Oh, absolutely. I've only been running for a couple of years, so I'm just learning who everyone is. And uh, it's a bit good that I've got no fear, really, because I've not run against any of these guys before. But um, to be in the same race with them is just uh, an honour. So, yeah. How important tactically is it running this type of race? Uh, well, it's, it's quite a short course. It's, it's only 10K, so I think you, you have to be in the race from the start. You can't hold back too much. So... Uh, um, you need to be with the leaders because if they get a few metres on you, you've just it's too quick for you to be able to get it back. Kieran, you've got a, a special task, I suppose we could call it, at this meet. Just tell us about it. Yeah, so my organisation is called Project Africa Athletics. I travelled out to East Africa um, late last year, late 2014. Um, I travelled out in August and I spent four months there um, where I was doing some field work um, with regards to elite and sub-elite distance runners from Uganda and from Kenya. So I spent some time at the home of marathon Olympic champion Stephen Kipperditch in Uganda in a small village called Kipchura. And also I spent some time in Kenya also. Um, the whole point of Project Africa Athletics following my visit when I returned home was to assist some of these athletes who are, you could say, who are stuck in the rural villages um, in East Africa, again focusing on Uganda and Kenya. So what we look to do is we look to give athletes a chance. We look to give them the chance to develop their talents, realise their talents and potentially make a, some small living out of, out of uh, professional sub-elite and elite distance running. So we have three guys over here in Ireland. Um, they're here for three months. They're staying with me. We're based in Oma, County Tyrone, and we're going to be travelling around it doing a number of international meets, um, starting today at the Greenmount International, and then we'll be travelling to the Great Ireland Run in Dublin in April, and well then we will be concluding our trip in the Belfast Marathon in May. So. I suppose people know 
African runners are always so good. There's so much pedigree there. How many hidden, hidden gems do you think there are there to be found? Yeah, I didn't actually realise the depth of talent that there is in East Africa until I visited the rural villages, deep in the rural villages. You know, you turn on the TV, you watch the big city marathons, London, Boston, New York, um, and there's all these East African distance runners at the front running in CN times, mile paces for 26 miles, etc. But on the other side of that, there's a lot of talented runners um, being lost to the, to the sport simply because the support structures are not in place in East Africa. And that's what we want to try to do through Project Africa Athletics is to potentially build a sustainable athletics camp that helps not the best athletes, but helps young development athletes come up, give them the structures, give them the training, give them the correct diets, etc., so that they can then go out, make some small fitness and bring it back to their villages um, with time. Is there any particular distance you're looking at or is it middle, long distance or pretty much everything encompassed? Yeah, no, my, my it's it's a middle and long distance um, programme. So the guys we have over today, uh, they're predominantly um, road runners, they're predominantly half marathon marathon guys, but we have a fantastic partnership with Athletics NI that allowed our guys to compete today. And we had some fantastic results. We had no, Gideon finished fourth against a top quality field, almost nicked third against uh, Jonathan, the Commonwealth Games runner, and we had Selena in the ladies race also, who has never competed outside Kenya before. This is our first international race. She finished ninth, and we had Vincent also, who finished seventh. So it's predominantly middle and long distance runner, uh, runners we're looking for. Um, the talent is there. It just needs tapped, and it just needs supported, and that's what we hope to do through Project Africa Athletics. Does it provide any cultural shocks for the runners? Yeah, it was actually difficult to get them out of the airport on Tuesday when I when I picked them up. The wind was howling, the rain was going down, they didn't fancy it too much. Even today they were complaining of the cold. I had to go and buy them hats and gloves, you know, um, because of the cold. And I said, look, this is this is a summer's day for us, you know. Um, but I think they're here for three months, so they will adopt. And they adopted fantastically today because we had some really, really strong results. Well, it may have been a pretty nice day here at the Antrim International Cross Country, but as all things are when it comes to this type of stuff. The mud still gets in there somewhere, doesn't it? Thanks for your company. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.